So if you guys know anything about me, you know that I absolutely love and adore the manga series Gantz. Both Gantz and Inuyashiki are within my top 10 favorite manga of all time, both done by Hiroyo Oku, who gets a lot of flack sometimes, people saying that he's a lot of style over substance because he adds in a lot of, you know, violence, gore, nudity, and all that stuff within his manga, which, yes, all that stuff is there, but number one, that stuff is pretty fun. And number two, I think his manga is vastly underrated in the sense of how deeply he gets connected to sort of like the human experience and emotion that the characters portray. Also, uh, how a lot of the characters find meaning and value in life based upon their own experiences. And he sort of like, he sort of gives the meaning of like life is to give you the chance to create your own meaning as opposed to having some ultimate grand purpose, which in a way is a very freeing experience. And I think that Gantz and Inuyashiki talk a lot about that. But anyways, guys, there's a bit of information going around right now about Gantz or just the franchise in general, if you call it a franchise, and things that are happening right now with it. Some of this information is a little bit old. I guess I've been living under a rock. I haven't heard about it. But some of this information is fairly new within the last week or so. Now, a lot of people have been curious for a long time about about some sort of anime revival for Gantz because there is an anime for Gantz. It came out in the early 2000s and it's got a lot of mixed reception because number one, it only covers about a fourth of the manga, so there's a ton of story that was never adapted. Number two, the anime makes up its own ending, which does this weird sort of existential Neon Genesis sort of style ending, which just doesn't work for Gantz whatsoever. And then also the animation style seems to be, it's very stunted in a lot of portions of the, of the anime where it just feels like the characters are barely moving that much or they're just standing around doing nothing. And it's just like, there's some very like awkward moments of the Gantz anime where just like characters just don't move. Like they're standing there very still talking about moving, but they're not moving. And it's just, I, I don't know, it works in the manga, but it doesn't really work in uh, in anime fashion. But anyways, I don't hate the anime. It's actually how I discovered Gantz. And I actually think it's pretty faithful to the manga up until a point, up until after the Buddha mission. If you know what the Buddha mission is, just Buddha mission. That's all I need to say. That's, that's all that needs to be fucking said, just Buddha mission. Anyways, um, so... After that, there wasn't really any Gantz material for a while, and then there was two live-action Japanese movies, which, again, do the same thing the anime did. They only cover up a portion of the manga and then sort of makes up its own ending. And also, those movies are pretty tame compared to what's going to be in the manga, and I'll get to that a little bit more in this video as well. And then lastly, there was uh, Gantz Zero, that was a CGI animated movie that's on Netflix, which covers an arc in the manga that takes place about halfway through, uh, but then it changes some things to try to be like an opening for fans being that this is, because it covers the Osaka arc, which happens, I think, starting in like volume 20 of the manga. And so it covers that arc in a movie, in a CGI movie, which is, I, I don't know, it's just really strange how they chose to do it. Now, it's a really fun action movie. If you know nothing about Gantz, I think you could watch it and just enjoy the, like, absurdity of it, but it doesn't really give you any, like, it doesn't give you any opening or, or development or closure, really, on anything, because it just, it doesn't make sense, because it's so just taken out of, like, the middle of the manga. Anyways, uh, so that's what it's been, man, and a lot of people have wondered about a Gantz revival anime, and there was a lot of things going around about why that wouldn't happen or couldn't happen, but now we actually have some confirmation from Hiroya Oku himself, the creator of the manga, as to why there is no anime happening. Now, a lot of people were thinking that it has to do with the subject material of the manga being that even nowadays, even with anime, like back in the 80s and 90s, you can get away with a lot more in anime, and even now, you can get away with a lot, you know, um, but Gantz is very, it's very, very dark, man, it's very dark, it's very brutal, there's a lot of sex in it, there's a lot of gore in it, and so, there's a, there's even, like, a, a couple of chapters that deal with, like, a, a mass shooting that happens, I don't know if I can say that on YouTube without getting, like, um, flagged or whatever, but, like, so, there's a lot of things that are in it that would be very uncomfortable to adapt, but when it comes to art, in my opinion, I think that art, sh uh, on occasion should be uncomfortable, because they should be able to express things and show you things about the real world, or things that they have, or ideas that they have, or different ways to approach it that might make you feel uncomfortable. Not everything has to be super safe, not everything has to be politically correct, not everything has to pander to everybody. Sometimes, 
because you know I think an artist should be able to tell their story exactly how they want to tell it and cover the subject material they want to whether it be controversial or not and actually there's a really funny quote from Hiroya that I'll say uh, in this video as well but anyways none of that seems to be the actual reason why uh, Gantz has never gotten an anime revival and it seems to be it has something to do with the American live action uh, adaptation of Gantz, which is supposedly in development right now. Now, I know it seems to be the thing right now that every like anime seems to be getting a live action adaptation. We have the Cowboy Bebop live action coming out in like two weeks, which I don't know how I feel about that. I love the first uh, like opening trailer they gave, and then the second trailer just seems so goofy and wacky. And I was like, what the fuck are they doing? Like, I, I don't know what's going on with that. Anyways, I'll watch it. I'll give it its fair shot, and we'll see what happens with that. Um, there is also a Gundam live-action movie coming out. They just dropped an image from that, so that exists now. Not really anything to talk about. It's just an image, but, I mean, it looks like the legit Gundam from original Mobile Suit Gundam, so I don't know. Hopefully, we'll get some casting information for that. There's also going to be a Yu Yu Hakusho live-action series on Netflix. That one is actually being made in Japan, so I don't know what it is. It just seems now is the time to, like, cash in and make live-actions to all of these anime and manga, and... I don't know how you guys feel about that. Like, let me know how you feel about that in the comments below because I have very mixed thoughts on it. On the one hand, you know, I feel like anime and manga are made for their specific medium and adapting them into live action definitely doesn't always work. We have a lot of cases, we have a lot of examples to point to of it not working, you know, in movies that you would think would work, like maybe, I don't know, the Attack on Titan movie or something like that. Um, and then we have like the major horror examples like fucking Dragon Ball Evolution and shit like that that is just like an abysmal – actually, that movie is actually pretty entertaining if you watch it as a comedy, but that's besides the point. The point is there are ways that things are drawn in anime or drawn in manga and the ways that they are expressed and the way that they express emotion that you can't really adapt the same way in live action because it just flows differently. Like I, I, it's really hard to explain, but – you know, sort of like sometimes anime and manga is overly dramatic, and that's not a criticism. That I think it works to the benefit of those mediums. Like I think the characters sometimes, you know, like cry out to the sky or like they, you know, really intense close-up shots of their eyes and things like that. Things that really work within those mediums that portray a particular emotion that you can't really do the same way in live action. It just doesn't work the same way. Um, so I, yeah, so I don't know what this obsession is all of a sudden with trying to make all these live action versions. I don't know if they're just running out of like comic book superhero stuff to do. So they're like, okay, let's grab manga now. Like I, I don't, I don't really know because manga is outselling comic books even in the West right now. So that's kind of interesting actually. Um, definitely, uh, would not believe that if you told my 15 year old self that that was getting picked on for, uh, reading Dragon Ball manga and Helsing manga in school. But that's again, besides the point. So here I have a Crunchyroll interview with Hiroya Oku. I will link this down below in the description so you can read it for yourself if you want to. But they're talking about Gigant, which is finishing up, and then they were talking about the revival of Gantz. And they were talking about it's been, you know, uh, 17 years, good God, since the Gantz anime came out. And he was talking about a reboot, and he was like, well, I don't know. And he was talking about, you know, because of the nudity and because of the gore scenes and stuff like that. But then he was also talking about how... He isn't able to do it because he did sign a contract for a Hollywood company. I believe it's Sony, I think. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments. He gave them the rights to adapt Gantz into a live action. And what that means is they won't be able to make an anime or live action version while that contract is in play. So basically what he's saying is that by signing that contract and allowing the US or you know Hollywood to make a live action version of Gantz, what that does is halt any other versions of Gantz from being made other than the manga. The only thing that Hiroya Oku still is able to do whatever he wants with is the manga. The manga's over, it's been complete for years, but you know, he still has the rights to that. But they can't start production on an anime and they can't make a, their own live action movie while this contract is in play. So I don't know the specifics of this contract. He doesn't go into it. Um, but they talk about when would that contract be up. And he says maybe in about four more years. We made the contract last year in 2020. And I have not been updated out of the as to the Hollywood adaptation is going. Or whether it will actually be made at all. 
Um, it is being made as far as I know because there's a little bit more information that came out after this, but I'll get into that in a second. So he said, it's likely COVID-19 paused the projects, which is obviously absolutely true. Um, and he's like, if it doesn't go through, then I'll get the rights back. So here's the thing also that you have to keep in mind is that a lot of times when they make these contracts, now I don't know the specifics of these con- of this of this contract whatsoever, but a lot of times the rights fall back to the original owner if the content is not created. So say it's for four years, right? So that means if this movie doesn't get made within four years, the rights go back to Oku. However, if this movie does get made within those four years, which is looking like it will, I don't know if that will halt the rights any further because say the Gantz movie comes out and it's actually successful and people like it and they go to make a sequel. Is that going to halt the rights even further? Does that mean that, okay, we made the movie, now we're going to go into production in a second movie? Does that mean, oh, you also don't get the rights back because we're continuously making movies? So it's kind of like how the the Disney Marvel thing worked where Fox had the rights to like, I don't know, Fantastic Four. This is before the merger or whatever. They had the rights to Fantastic Four, but they were like, if you don't make a movie within the next five years, the rights revert back to Marvel, and that's what happened. So something like that. So I don't know if that's the case where it's like they have to keep making movies to keep the rights or if they only have the rights for these four years. I'm not really sure. But whatever the case, at least until 2024, we are getting no Gantz anime reboot and no Gantz movies outside of whatever the U.S., creates so that is your reason why that is your absolute you know 100 factual oku said it himself straight from this interview you can read it this is the reason why there's been no gantz anime so there's going to be a live action u.s version now continuing from that the director has been chosen for it so this information came out about two weeks ago and this guy is julius avery is going to be directing the live action Gantz movie. I've never seen any of his films. He's made about four movies. One is called Overlord, which I do believe is a horror film about Nazis of some sort. So I might want to watch this to check it out. Came out in 2018. Um, And this is his only like bigger movie that people have talked about. So this is the one that kind of like has been talked about. It's it's R rated. I'm sure it's very action heavy. It looks like something somebody into Gantz would be into, you know what I mean? Not to typecast ourselves, but we usually like crazy fucked up shit like this, so this would probably make sense. Um, So yeah, so this guy is going to be directing Gantz, and the interesting thing about that also is that Hiroya Oku, uh, the creator of Gantz, had no idea. He was talking about, uh, he actually responded to somebody on Twitter, which I don't think I have, maybe I do. Is this the right one? Um... Got to, it's got to like trans, translate all these tweets one by one. Signed a contract, but I didn't know it was going. Yeah, so he said that he signed the contract. He knew that the rights were given over, but he didn't know that it was going into production or that this guy was going to be the director. So basically after he signed the rights that they could make the movie, they haven't kept in contact with him at all, which I think is a really shitty thing. I think it would be important to keep the creator of the series on board at least as like a consultant or at least as somebody to like – you know, give advice as the movies go along. I hope that they're not just like disregarding Oku whatsoever and just making their own story. I would be absolutely pissed if they did that. Like, look, I understand that you're making a live action in the US. Okay, change the setting from Japan to LA or wherever. That makes sense. Change the character of Corono to, you know, a, an American kid, whether he's Japanese or white or black. I don't give a shit. I don't give a shit what race the characters are. I really don't. Um, whatever it is, you're making him American. Okay, that's fine. I get that. Those little changes are fine. But if you're changing the actual story of Gantz, if you're changing, if it's not going to be Corono and Kato, if they're not going to get, sorry, this is in the first chapter. I don't, it's, I don't care if I spoil it. If they're not going to get killed in the first chapter by a subway and then get transported to the Gantz room and then the first aliens they aren't going to face are the green onion aliens, then I don't, I don't want the movie if that's not going to be the case. So I'm really hoping that this dude, this director, uh, Julius Avery, I mean, he's got a pretty badass looking beard, so I'm hoping he's a cool guy. Uh, That's how I judge my character of a person, just by how badass their beard is. Uh, So I really hope that he gets the material and he's able to to make it at what it should be. I really hope they're not just like making their own story up and just taking the concept and not actually doing Oku's story. That would be very, very bad. 
Um, but anyways, this is a really good interview by Hiroyo Oku, and I would definitely recommend checking it out. And uh, the one thing I wanted to say, so the, the interviewer says manga is outselling American comic books in the U.S., which is true. And then I love Oku. Oku's response is so legit. It's so funny. Uh, he says, I saw so many people talking about that on the internet, and I also read a criticizing tweet about how American comics have to care about political correctness and copyrights while manga does not laughs and it literally says i don't know if you can see that if i'm hiding it on the screen hold on it literally says that he uh he laughs after he says that which is hilarious where where is it on the thing i don't know it's up there somewhere read the interview yeah um which is true which is true man which is true like uh you know i i mean I, I, I don't know, man. It's just like manga. This is why manga is better, I think, in a lot of ways. Because, number one, it's one creator's vision the entire way through. That's my problem with comics primarily is that is like American comics is because they consistently change writers and artists all the time. And it just doesn't feel consistent. It doesn't feel like the same story. And then also, uh, you know, they do have to wonder, worry about that because people are always criticizing and, you know, in either criticizing or pandering or something's wrong or something's offensive or something's too woke or something's not woke enough. And it's just like they're, they're, they don't focus as much on telling the story. And I think a lot of that also is because it's not coming from one creator's vision where it's like it's an amalgamation of people and then like – characters have like status quos that they're not able to evolve too far from because then they would be too far away from what people recognize as the character and you know so like characters evolutions are stunted whereas you have a character like Corono who is a completely different character by the end of Gantz than he is at the beginning so you know whatever that's just my little two cents on that but anyways guys tell me what you think down in the comments below um are you pissed off about this is this you know do, would you rather just have a Gantz reboot anime rather than a live action and if this live action does come out what are you guys expecting to see from it do you care do you not want live action at all i want to know everyone's thoughts down below i did just put a video out about Gantz the other day the horror of Gantz. that video did pretty well actually as far as like non-berserk videos go on my channel so uh thank you please watch it if you haven't already let me know your thoughts about this down in the comments below also guys i would really appreciate it if you did like the video and comment because all interaction helps it be seen in the algorithm and i'm trying to make my way to 75k subscribers by the end of the year i'm um, at 69.6 or something so like i, I it's probably not going to happen but like I'm, I'm like teetering on the edge so if you guys could help get me there I'd really appreciate it. Other than that, guys, I appreciate your endless support, as I always do. Uh, it does mean a lot to me. I hope you all have a wonderful day, and I'll talk to you in the next video. Live stream tomorrow, most likely.